probably been in the market looking for either a generator or a power station, but you just don't know which one to buy. I'm gonna give you three reasons why you should pick up a power station, because there's no noise, there's no fumes, and it can be carried just about anywhere. You're gonna wanna take a look at them all, but you're also gonna wanna find out what's more reasonable for you. Now, at the end of the video, I'm gonna disclose which one I would probably pick up. So let's talk about the three things you need to know before buying a power station. Number one, weight and portability. This is entirely crucial depending on what you wanna get. You do not wanna get something that's just gonna be an anchor and you're not gonna be able to move it around or it's not gonna fit what you're trying to do. You could either get something really small like a 600 watt or you get something about the size of a 2600 watt power supply. This is actually 2400 watts. It all matters about how portable you want it to be. Do you want it to take around to kids' soccer practices so you have something to charge your phone or maybe just run a light fan? Or maybe you want something to be able to roll it around in order to power your camper. How are you gonna transport it? Do you have a small vehicle? Will one of these fit in the back seat? or you're gonna be putting it inside the trunk. Those are things that are really crucial that you need to figure out before you're gonna go out and spend some money on one of these. Number two, power requirements. Picking the wrong size of one of these power stations could actually be detrimental. For instance, if I just wanted to run a light fan and get something to where it was only gonna eat about 200 watts, I would probably choose something small like one of the 600 watt units. If I wanted to power up my camper and I needed to be running like 2000 watts, I'm gonna go with a larger unit. But it's very important that you understand the basic and how these power stations operate. One thing you're gonna find out, they all operate in watts. Talking a little bit technical, watts is really easy to figure out. How many amps is that particular device that you're running at that particular time? You take the amount of amps and you times that by the amount of voltage and you're gonna get your watts. For instance, if I wanted something to use one amp of power and I'm gonna be running at 110 volts, I'm gonna be spending 110 watts. If I was gonna be using something that required 10 amps, I would take 10 and times that by 110 volts and that would give me 1100 watts. It makes a very distinct difference between the units I'd be choosing because obviously the 600 watt unit would not be able to provide for that. Another part that you need to understand before plugging something into these power stations is that are you going to be running a, some sort of motor or a pump of some sort? Now there's gonna be a rating of which these units are gonna have a peak number to it. 600 watt unit is gonna have a peak usage of 1200 watts, which means is that if I had a motor or a fan running, the immediate draw of that fan's gonna require more electricity, start turning that fan, and once it starts circulating, it's gonna back down. They make these power stations able to go up to that certain allotted actual demand that's required from it. Number three are the features of these power stations. Now, some of them do a lot more than just provide power. Some of them have USB ports, some of them have lights, a boom box inside it, wireless charging stations for your phones, and the ability to control them over Wi-Fi remotely to be able to turn on and off the power ports. Take a look at what the capabilities are and see if it fits exactly what you need. We'll go into some of the additional features of what the PB2400 does so we're gonna take a look at the Yard Force portable power station. It has 2,400 watts of continuous power and 4,800 watts of peak load. It also has a Bluetooth speaker, Wi-Fi connection, and wireless charging ports. It's able to support your RV for a 30 amp plug. Did I mention it has an LED light? Let's say you went out of town and you wanted to turn something on and off directly from here, remotely. You could completely do that over the CloudHawk app. I'm gonna get a little bit into the CloudHawk app. You gotta check it out. Let's get to it. Another feature of the app that I really enjoyed was the ability to be able to turn on and off the USB port, the DC port, and the AC power ports as well. And look live what the charging capabilities were on the solar side of it, and also the power usage consumption on the AC voltage side for each individual power port for the USBs as well as the 110 outlets. That was such a huge feature to be able to do all over Wi-Fi not just Bluetooth, charge time. I'm telling you right now, within an hour, I had this thing charged already to 70% capacity. For it to be able to discharge and then charge back up over AC within like an hour to an hour and a half to two hours to 100% capacity 
was absolutely phenomenal. And that was something I did not expect from it. Other units that I tried, it took pretty much hours to charge up the unit, sometimes all day. But this guy right here was able to charge completely, I don't wanna say under an hour and a half, but it was pretty darn close. And that's what really sticks out on this particular unit. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button below and follow me for more reviews.